It's happening at grocery stores across the country. That much lettuce. Store shelves nearly empty of fruits, vegetables, beef and chicken, even some cereals, bakery and juice items hard to find. The only milk I can get were two tiny bottles of um, fat free, so my my kids will not be happy about that. In a typical year, 5 to 10 percent of grocery items may be unavailable. Today, nationwide, roughly 15 percent are out of stock. The National Grocers Association tells NBC News, while there is plenty of food in the supply chain, we anticipate consumers will continue to experience sporadic disruptions in certain product categories. Without major transformation of everything to do in food, farms, retailers, food companies, we're going to see shortages and price increases for the next 12 to 18 months. The reasons are many. Soaring demand for groceries, with Americans choosing to eat at home during the Omicron surge. Large numbers of food manufacturers and grocery employees out sick with COVID. As many as 50 percent in some stores. Winter storms paralyzing major interstates. And a backed up supply chain with a shortage of 80,000 truck drivers nationwide. NBC's Jolene Kent with Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg in L.A. Right now, we have something like 300,000 truck drivers leaving that job every single year. And that creates backups into the warehouses uh, that are reflected all the way here at the ports. Experts say store shelves may not improve until the pandemic recedes, staffing levels return to normal, and the global food distribution network is restored. Tonight, the alarming spike in inflation soaring to its highest level in nearly 40 years, casting a shadow over America's entire economy. The stunning surge in December, 7% over a year ago, the pace of inflation slowing slightly over last month, still marking three straight months with inflation over 6%. It is bringing a lot of unnecessary stress, and it's already a struggle, especially living paycheck to paycheck. Lisa Gallegos is an elementary school office manager and a single mom of three in Colorado. Prices for gas and groceries are so high, like many Americans, she's had to start relying on a food bank. I'm fine. I can go with no meal a day, but I want to make sure that my kids at least have, you know, food um, in, in their bellies. Inflation sending already sky-high prices soaring even higher across the board. Gas prices up 50% over last year. Used cars and trucks rising 37%. Meat, chicken, fish, and eggs 13% higher. Rent and mortgages going up 4%. Tonight, nearly half of all small businesses say they're having to raise their prices. When the bills come in, what do you say? I mean, I'm almost floored. At their dry cleaning businesses in Maryland, Ishmael and Rochelle Wilson feel like they're the ones being taken to the cleaners. Plastic bags, shoulder protectors, receipt paper, all costing way more. This time last year, we paid $24.50 for a box of hangers. Now? Now we pay $52.95 for a double. box of hangers. More than double. And it's cutting into everything that we need to do to grow and to sustain, quite frankly. And on top of it, they'd already been struggling in the pandemic. So this Friday, the Wilsons are shutting down one of their stores. The president today tweeting, we are making progress in slowing the rate of price increases, but there's still more work to do. But Republicans are blasting the president with rising wages, unable to keep up with record inflation. Families are struggling. People that are hurt most, of course, seniors, people on a fixed income, young couples trying to get by. And it is the Biden policies. Peter, what is the White House saying tonight about how long this high inflation might last? Yeah, Lester, remember six months ago, President Biden insisted rising inflation was temporary. But tonight, the White House says these higher prices could last until the end of this year.